start with introductions. My name is Phyllis Nastasio. I'm the chair of the committee. Chan Chan. Hi, can you? Oh, I'm trying to get the camera. Okay, hi. 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 Just introduce yourself. Hi, I'm a co chair of uh, the committee. My name is Chan Chan. Hi. Cynthia? Cynthia Rodriguez, board member and committee member. And Malcolm? Malcolm Gray, board member and committee member. Okay. And Teresa, do you want to introduce yourself? Good evening, everyone. My, of course, my name is Teresa Roberts. I'm the current president of the Education Council for District 11. Thank you for having me tonight. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so introductions are done. We don't have the minutes from the last meeting. Chan Chan, do you know if they were submitted? I, I submitted like two months ago already. Okay, yeah. so we'll, we'll ask Jeremy about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna turn it over to Teresa and tell us what you need, what how we can help you with anything. Okay, um, basically what I could just really tell you is a little bit about what our mission is um, or what it, well, yes. So I've been um, the president for two years um, for the Education Council. And as a new member with a new board, <laughs> we all had to quickly learn our work. So we kept our mission basically simple, which is focusing on um, educating ourselves, building community relationship with all the constituents, and then with the knowledge we have, you know, just really bridging the gap, really um, bringing to light um, everything that's going on in the district or, you know, just really making sure that everybody has information, information is being properly shared or the resources that are in our district are being equitably distributed because we realize there's a lot of resources, there's a lot of businesses, not-for-profits, <laughs> um, constituents in our community that really, help or is willing to help um, shape our schools and make it great. So um, at this time, uh, we also realized because we came in during the pandemic, you know, we had to recreate a new normal in person, um, to bringing back enrichment programs and opportunities to our school, making sure that our school still gets what they need, as well as fighting against um, the city giving away spaces <laughs> space. I guess they like the sardine approach to learning, but um, we need space to move. We need space to grow. We need space to feel like home and we're actually in a real family. So that has been a, um, a big thing. So we've been speaking to um, the chancellor's office, um, working with the borough president's office, um, some of our um, um, elects, you know, the assembly members, the council members, the senators, <laughs> the congressmen to really push and hold the um, Department of Education or New York City Public Schools accountable to really um, rethink how they um, how they um, utilize the spacing in the school because there is antiquated. Um, where um, there was a class size law reduction that was passed this um, um, a few months ago by the governor, you know, so there's really making sure that there actually are planning <laughs> um, to, uh, to reduce the class size and not just take the money that's given um, by the, uh, the state um, to just use it for something else. Um, there was a pending lawsuit against them because they were out of compliance since um, the law had been passed. But since then, they've um, decided to put together a, I, I guess you could say, advisory council. Before they used to, past chancellors like to use task force. The current chancellor likes to use advisory council. So there is a, a group with Leone um, who's spearheading it with the UFT to really hold them accountable and make sure that the voices are included. Um, we're also holding um, them accountable for some of the busing issues and the hiccups when it comes to our IEP students to make sure that they're, they're also getting their services fully met. Um, he's also devised an advisory council with, um, for, tech, for technology 
uh, with um, partnered with Columbia University. Some of us are there. Basically, um, the focus, I was there. Um, my subgroup was focusing on how we can engage um, um, everyone in the community. How can we make um, the apps friendly? Which apps actually work? <laughs> and it's really getting the feedback from the parents, particularly the students and the staff, right? Because the staff has to learn all this technology, all these different apps, as well as putting together programs to teach the kids, assess the kids with the programs or with whatever rubric they would like to use. So all of this is kind of confusing. And currently, I, I think you, I don't know if you've been following the news, but they finally passed the budget, right? Um, for the city. <laughs> but a month ago, <laughs> the chancellor wanted to, um, well, not wanted to, they did um, with a, a panel for education policy pass um, a proposed budget um, for the DOE, um, which, you know, there was a lot of things that were questionable because there was large expenditures for like locks and other stuff without even reading the contracts. Um, that's what they seem like they're doing now. They're passing stuff before reading the contracts. And I don't know about you, if you're purchasing a home or anything, <laughs> we always like to read the fine lines before we dish out money. So um, we're definitely trying to keep an eye on that and making sure that the money is being spent wisely or if we're gonna spend this, well, instead of just locks, <laughs> I hope you're having like some sort of ADT system where there's um, video surveillance monitoring because uh, when you've pushed hard for the past two years for them to upgrade our school's wiring system to support the surveillance systems <laughs> instead of just buying surveillance systems, but then we don't have <laughs> updated wiring <laughs> to support that or, you know, central air conditioning because they had like to put the boxes in the window and it's like, no, we need to kind of like redo our um, havoc systems. Our boilers needed to um, be upgraded or replaced. Um, um, air filtration, it was is a big thing that got exposed um, throughout the pandemic and we're, hope, we're holding them accountable to it, especially since, you know, they like to pack us in like sardines, <laughs> you know, we can't be breathing germs and everything on us. Um, and and um, what else? So um, we, a part of our uh, mission for the past two years is also, we, we noticed that with the change of three chancellors, <laughs> um, three ex types of expectations, you know, cutting off half the, the staff population because they're not vaccinating and all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, removing that, you know, so that whoever was properly improperly mistreated has an opportunity to come back. Is that true? You know, a lot of people has mixed attitudes, right? Because you've been forced to work while your relatives were dead or dying or, or you were close to dead, seeing kids and families and the parents experiencing loss. And then you have employees that may be coming back <laughs> from all this loss or hurt feelings and stuff. So our focus was, or at least mine uh, uh, was, you know, we're asking them to take care of our babies. We're asking them to teach. We're asking them for so much. And I'm not talking about just the teachers. You know, we did a, a tree of what the actual school community encompasses because every last person's role in the school building is important and it matters. And um, all of them have access to our children. So we're focusing on emotional well being of our children and our family. We also need to take into consideration of the emotional well being of the people who are being sent to work with our kids, you know, and a lot of them are parents as well of kids in the system, <laughs> you know, that they have to leave with other principals and other um, colleagues <laughs> while they come taking care of ours. So with that being said, I know that's a mouthful. We've been just really trying to push for different ways that we could, you know, if we're going to have anything happening, let it be an appreciation. Of course, you can't just have a party, you can't just give awards. You have to add an educational component to it. <laughs> some sort of lesson. <laughs> so what we did, we started with um, the top, you know, 
uh, we started with the supervisors, you know, just saying thank you. Um, because I know, especially in the district office, they were on call 24 hours. They barely slept. They, they, they know the details, the scary details that not a lot of us are privy to about each family. But wanted to let them know that they were appreciated. Um, then we moved to the principals. And we we're just hoping that this, the, the, starting from the top, it will, it will be contagious, like they would want to acknowledge their own staff, the people they're supervising. Um, we um, we were hosting, going to host a dinner to just really um, appreciate all the teams in the district, um, in the district, in the each school community. Um, there's an SLT team, there's the admin team, there's the um, cluster teams, there's the custodial team, the food service teams, <laughs> the power of professional and special education teams. And I feel like there's one that I'm missing because I know there were seven awards, <laughs> but we are distributing them to the principals so that they can think about their teams when they're having, you know, these graduation ceremonies or acknowledging attendance and stuff, just something to kind of help them help their school community to know that they've been appreciated. And um, on top of that, we are going to have an end of the school year celebration on June 8th, where we've asked them to identify three individuals, whether it's students, a staff, or a parent, however way they want to um, utilize their three persons so that we could also acknowledge them. And this is also going to be utilized as an opportunity for all the constituents that are heavily involved in our educational um, community could also set up the ta a table and, you know, let their presence be known like, hey, you know, um, I'm for your school or we have this, um, you know, um, partnership we want to build with you to continue because everybody needs to be acclimated to in person. So we're hoping to get some restaurant, local restaurant vendors to come. Um, definitely we're pulling in the politicians again, <laughs> you know, because holding them accountable because for our schools and to make sure that they're present and easily accessible and they're frequenting our schools so that when we do ask for something is very clear, it's not brand new, <laughs> it's easy to digest, now do the work to, to, to do right by us. Um, I definitely, um, in everything we do, I always send out the invitation to all the community boards. Forgive me because I don't realize that just sending it to the main person is not the same as, you know, sending it to you guys, you know? So, so I've, I've met a lot of board members in passing who says, you know, introducing myself to them, and they never got anything, you know, mm -hmm. and we send emails almost on a daily basis. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I was like, anything, not even invitations. I was like, I go to your websites to sometimes steal some of the flyers you put up, you know, <laughs> so I could, you know, you know, make sure that the inf information is um, equally distributed. Um, so right now, um, You've asked what I need from you uh, right mm -hmm. now. I definitely need you to reach out to your parents in the community and really encourage them to vote. Um, not just for the CC, but also um, this is also the time where the schools are looking for parent leaders for the PTA, which is the Parent Teachers Association or Parent Association, um, the Title I parents for the school because um, most of our schools in the district are Title I schools. So there's, um, they have to keep an eye on, I think about four to five different Title I lines and specifically funds allocated, um, which I think is 1% of each school's entire budget to make sure that they're using it to support the parents. Not using it for something else, <laughs> Mm -hmm. We're using it to support the parents, whether it's resources, educational stuff, any opportunities to build engagement. And, um, you know, there's also an SLT, which is a school leadership team body where there has to be equal amount of staff to parents making the decision, assessing the students, mm -hmm. knowing which programs to use, which ones work and don't work, and signing off of them or, you know, really uh, making sure that um, the people that, the mandatory people on the team 
which is composed of the principal, the D30, the D37 rep, um, the UFT lead. There's supposed to be a special education team lead um, in the school that making sure that they're doing right by the teachers, by all the workers that are under D37 and by all our special needs students as well. Um, so our parent voices are very important and um, part of me wanting to reach out to the community boards or have that bridge partnership is because um, the voices of the parents in the Bronx are relatively low. Um, they make up only probably like 10 to 20 percent of the citywide voice. And it's troubling to me because we're one of the largest boroughs with the most needs or they're trying to make us the borough that has all the needy people in the city, mm -hmm. but yet um, decisions are being made for us. Um, they're not made, being made thinking about us. <laughs> they're right. being made primarily thinking about, um, you know, I guess the business benefits that, <laughs> you know, businessmen at the top, mm -hmm. you know, can make and not really producing um, the quality that we want for our students and even a quality environment for our staff to want to work in, you know, instead of just let me just be here for five years or so until my my debt is paid off and then go to Westchester or to Long Island or, you know, whatever, you know, but just so we just really want people to see that this is a, a, a community, a family and a home, you know, and if our kids don't grow, we're not growing you know, and there is a growing disconnect between the older parents and the youth. And we wanna make sure we're bridging that gap. Um, you can see with the rise of the violence that is happening, <laughs> you know, it's like some of these people just need to really sit down in good circles with um, and get some wisdom. But, you know, we need to kind of like, let everyone know in the community that they're a valuable presence and a much needed um, entity to make sure that we all grow. And thank you so much for letting me talk. <laughs> um, there's so much <laughs> I could I could say. I know, I know. I'm a teacher, so I right understand here. exactly what you're saying. I with you 100 um, percent. Where is your event on January 8th? Um, it's going to be at um, PS 121. On through, okay. Yes, Good. so right now we're having a planning committee going on. So mm -hmm. um, I think the politicians responsible for that area is Carl Heasty, mm -hmm. um, Marjorie Velasquez. So we're, we're pulling them in, um, but then we're also speaking to the other ones. So they don't mind. Um, providing assistance, any support. Um, we're reaching out to any constituents in the area that want to set up table to kind of support the event. Um, the layout of the event is going to be from one to five. Um, we're hoping that the first two hours we can just give acknowledging awards to celebrate. Um, this year we had an art fair not an art fair, we had an art showcase at Lehman College where the oh. children were able to display pieces of art as well as um, their talents. Um, and um, we're hoping that, you know, some of them could perform or just showcase their pieces of art. I know um, Senator Bailey had a, a, a showcase at the YMCA display. It was a great artwork. showcase. Yeah, I yeah. was there. Yeah, yeah my students were actually included too. Yeah. Right. And then also we've had a, a science fair, district wide science fair, mm -hmm. um, but we're going to have a borough wide and the borough wide is going to lead to city wide. <laughs> oh, so wow. that's happening between May and June. Wow. However, you know, the kids were excited. That was that had happened at PS 94. Um, so um, but they were so proud of their work. So um, I'm not sure we're going to have the winners or and well, I, the way I put it out to the schools was if you have any students that want to showcase anything great that they had did, you know, because I don't want to say just the winners, right. you know, but, mm -hmm. you know, I want them to feel excited. I really want this to be uh, a celebration 
especially since it's the end of our two-year term and they're going to the district is going to inherit a whole new um council <laughs> so wow. um you know so we really just want to be able to pass the baton and and to really make it a celebration and not this cold cut you know disconnect and then um we also are having a stem affair at um ms 144 mm -hmm. forgive me with the dates it's sometime in this month this month is a very very loaded month <laughs> So on top of all the testing, <laughs> on top of all the testing, MS-144, you know, a steam, uh, there's a STEAM showcase happening <laughs> at their school. Um, our, 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 our diversity, equity, and inclusion committee, part of our council, just finished having a big um, diversity and equity fashion show cultural celebration, and that oh. was at PS-127. So we had a lot of kids showcasing over there. So, you know, they were singing, dancing, doing arts, not doing arts. I think it was mostly singing, dancing. And um, I think some of our schools have a partnership with Broadway, because I think there was a Aladdin number that was there. Um, but I mean, it was really nice. There was a, lo a lot of nice things going on. And this Saturday, we're going to have a soapbox derby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. So we had the first one last year, and, um, you know, it was a success. This year, we were trying to get all 45 schools um, to build a car, because kids have to build their car, and they're going to compete against each other. The winner of the race this Saturday is um, probably going to get an opportunity to compete, I think, citywide. I don't know if it's citywide or throughout the state of New York, but Whatever it was, our winner was able to go to Ohio, where oh. it's a week long event. So we we funded the, them and their parents <laughs> um, to be able to go and enjoy the festivities and participate in the Ohio, um, I guess, nationwide <laughs> races. Wow. That's great. So yeah. So um, if so I fantastic. need anything from the community board, definitely um, they're trying to figure out or collect donations of how we could fund the parents to go. Because I think if they win, it's only the student that gets funded. So we need to kind of raise funds so that the whole family, you know, can go and have fun right. and, you know, they could feel supported. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. So, Is that something that we could and then we're also with. having a special our first special education resource fair that's going to be in on june 3rd so um i know the focus is to invite only the families that with kids that have ieps in our district mm -hmm. but listen i i believe in i have one child but then i could have three that don't all right. of them are coming no one is going to be turned away Oh, I have a friend who have a friend because I have two special needs kids and part of um, my focus with their team is a social thing because they're both autistic so they're socially lacking so you don't want to separate mm -hmm. them and just keep them with their own kind you have to try to you know acclimate them to society so that means bringing people who are neurotypical <laughs> and as well as you know relatable and just really focusing on educating everyone right you know because part of like oh you know I, they may not feel good i was like but that's just to me a mental thing right because if i'm teaching them that there's something wrong with them they're going to start feeling insecure or Absolutely. feeling like they have to apologize when people don't understand or me but I'm like, no, I have to teach you how to accept them. Mm -hmm. And if I am not walking with you or going to the park with you or, you know, going to these things, how would you learn? And how would I, you know, really just keep their esteem high? So to me, if anybody comes, they want to eat, play, have fun, they're welcome. That's going to be at PS 96. <laughs> So we have a committee planning over there with, um, I think it's Assemblymember John Sicaro, 
mm -hmm. as well as the, the New York Public Library, um, NIDC, Neighborhood Initiative Development, Development Corporation, yeah. um, and um, some folks from D75. So it's really going to be focused on having activity stations, hopefully if the weather is nice, a bouncy house, face painting, dance and movement, um, and hoping to get, you know, again, more resources out there, resource tables or any other folks that could help make it worthwhile. Um, so that's going to be June 3rd from 11 to 2 p.m. at PS 96. That's awesome. Can you email me all the events that are coming up? Because sure. this committee is a very involved committee and we want to be part of everything. Sure. So we will. So I'm sure I can speak for the rest of the committee. I think we would be more than happy to join in on some of these events, table at some of these events, help with fundraising. Yes. I mean, yes, that's a big part. We have a budget, but we're not allowed to fundraise <laughs> and we're not allowed to ask right. for a monetary donations, but we do, um, we can ask for sponsors and um, we do. Well, I am willing to write a lot of letters <laughs> as much as I can. Um, and this, you know, just figuring out, like, even if there is a donation, um, the district office will find a way, maybe it goes to a school or to them, mm -hmm. but we find, we will find a way to make sure that it gets there. But just, you know, just to know that the CC, we, although we have a budget, we don't, we can't touch it. Uh, we have an administrative assistant who is a DOE employee, and she's the only one that um, with the district team that could really determine if whatever we want to purchase is a, a go or a no. <laughs> yeah, but so, Ms. Roberts, um, we yes, as as the community board, we can move people in that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, Miguel. We can. Yeah, we can. You said you can. I'm sorry, I, I didn't understand what you meant. I said, Miss Roberts, as members of the community board, we can move people in that direction. Okay. Yes, I definitely know there's power in the community board because I know when I first started my parental advocacy. Um, I really didn't know anything about um, the DOE. <laughs> I just know that um, I was having separation anxiety from my kids, and I needed to, <laughs> I needed to, um, you know, put my energy into something positive. Right. And at the same time, the city shut down. <laughs> and then my um, principal was like, "Oh, we need to um, something about zoning." And I'm like, "Well, how am I supposed to do that?" So I think I wrote an email or letter to everyone in the state of New York. <laughs> and then the community board pulled me aside and was like, okay, let me give you direction. You go to this one for that one, this one for this one. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> Ever since then, everything I, every time I want to do something, I'm like, we have to notify the community board. <laughs> So every yeah. email I always send, I know I'm always attaching the community board, but I didn't really understand the dynamic of the community board that you guys are, could be like up to 40 members <laughs> and there were specific committees. And just yeah. FYI, um, your, your ask, can you send that to Phyllis so that she can send it to all of us? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I, I, I definitely can. And I started out in the Board of Ed when I first started. I taught at PS205 uh, on Southern Boulevard. And then I went out on maternity leave. When my daughter started um, school at three years old, I was hired by her little school. It was a little daycare program. And then it just went on from there. And then she went to Catholic school and I was hired there. I was president of the PTA also, and I was also in charge of uh the, all the events so yeah i i know exactly where you're coming from and we are here to help you however we can does anybody from the committee have a question for teresa 
No, I just want that calendar. <laughs> that calendar. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. of great events, right, Cynthia? Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I'm looking forward to attending a lot of them. Chan I'm most Chan? definitely going to forward that over to you guys. Perfect. Chan Chan? But I have a question. Do you guys have, like, any monthly meeting with all the um, Full board? community boards um, for yeah. education, you know, the committees? Yeah, the full board meeting is the usually the last Thursday of the month. Sometimes it's the third Thursday, but there's a calendar on the website. So if you go to the CB11 website, you can bring up the calendar and it'll tell you when the full board meeting is. Our education meeting is always the first Wednesday of the month. Do you collaborate with the other educational committees from other boards? We haven't. We okay. haven't asked. The reason why I'm throwing this out to you is because the District 11 community um, education community consists of community boards 9, 10, 11, and 12. Okay. And it's, it's been one of my biggest desires to get all four educational committees together so that, again, to escalate our voices and our mm -hmm. needs and um, definitely keep the eyes on the, the capital projects and some projects where they claim is not a capital project, but after speaking to the facilities and uh, custodial engineers, you know, they're doing a lot of patchwork and there's but so much patchwork they can do. They're like, they really right. needed, you know, these repairs or these additions um, or modifications to push. And I definitely know you guys are a very strong force, um, especially when it comes to the structure and just even the playgrounds or the, the mm -hmm. you know, in the area. And we, we definitely need that for the kids. Yeah, well, I do know Angela Torres from CB10. She's the education chair there, but I will reach out and find out who it is on seven and nine, and I will reach out to them also. Anton, can I ask you, is that your real background? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, look, it, it, so I, I, I've got that my. That is like, my background. I've got my, I've got my stupid pants behind me, but oh my gosh, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to uh, exchange pants for sure. Yes, definitely. I can't show you the whole thing. All I can tell you is that I think I had um, claustrophobia during the COVID, mm -hmm. and the white walls all over the place, like, just drove me crazy. So, every wall in my house is a different color. Thank God. Uh, and, but each room has an accent wall of some sort. <laughs> nice. Nice. So I, was like, I can't bring the museum here. I'm going to bring the museum here. I'm going to bring the aquarium here. <laughs> Absolutely. Because <laughs> I don't I know it. when we're going to go outside again. <laughs> but those were my calming things. And of course, it helped me and my boys. Because, you know, they're both autistic. Mm -hmm. And these sensory mm -hmm. things textures, colors, images make yep. the world of a difference. Absolutely. Uh, Robert Press has his hand up. Bob, you have a question? Well, if the board members are finished, I'll wait. Go right ahead, Bob. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, as a former parent leader all the way up to the Chancellor's Parent Advisory Council and who was at the school leadership team set up, it may be parents and staff, but the principal has the final decision. It's not up to the parents or the staff because, as we were told, they can't fire the parents. Uh, you keep mentioning community education district, but it was set up under the education law as a community district education committee. Uh, Mayor Bloomberg, in his zeal to get rid of the districts and put regions, he made region one and region two in the Bronx, tried to get rid of districts, but you should be getting together with your other C E of the C D E C members and presidents that it's the community district education council under the education law that replace school boards. So and that's about it. But oh one more thing. Uh I'm surprised that you haven't talked about it, Ms. Madam Chair. PS one oh eight is getting a large increase to the building. That's the on the agenda. It is going to be discussed. Okay. All right. Well, I, I just want to you know make sure you discuss it with the uh, chair of the CEC because they vote on zoning. That's one of their voting powers. So we all right, we've, I'll... we've actually discussed it already, Teresa yeah. and I. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, we did. Teresa and I did discuss one hundred and eight. 
and uh, the extension. It is not going up to eighth grade. It is still going to be up to fifth grade. Um, they're using the extra space for more classrooms, a science lab, a gym, so different things. But, um, and I think I mentioned this to you, Teresa, I did put in a proposal to have my school, which is closing, taken over by the DOE to extend 108 from six to eight. Before a charter school, now I'm not against charter schools, but we have enough charter schools in our community. We need good public schools. 108 is a quality public school. They do a good job. We need those parents to have the opportunity to keep their kids there until eighth grade. So I'm hoping I've reached out to Christine Vaughn, haven't heard back from her. I'm hoping she's trying to work on that. If you can reach out to her, Teresa, and just put a bug in her ear that- Well, just to follow up, because after I spoke to you, I mm -hmm. did reach out to her. I did put in the ask for us to meet again with district planning, and I did express to her the importance of making it a K through eight school. Um, and there's um, just for all of you guys to know, um, yes, there historically have been an overcrowded school. That's why they were getting an extension in the first place. Um, one thing that was brought to my attention by the neighboring principal <laughs> was that this year their score, um, their scores their attendance was lower. So what would that look like to the new chancellor is that <laughs> they're, you know, they're underutilized because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's it's not, you know, anymore in the habit of being the over, overcrowded right. kind of school that we once was. Right. So but I told her that it would be in our best interest to increase it. Yes. Because if we just add more classes, then they're going to say that there's this amount of classrooms that are being underutilized or not utilized at all. And of course, you know, they don't. The way the law is now, um, since it's a new addition, if an application goes in from a charter, we're not going to be notified. You know, it's just one day we're going to be walking down the street and seeing that there's a school there. So even though the intention is for it to be built for 108, it could just easily go. Um, um, once the the build is complete, yeah, and they don't have to notify us about that. So um, she's fully aware of that. Um, I'm a, you just reminded me that she she did not <laughs> respond, mm -hmm. <laughs> or she did respond. She said thank you, and she's definitely going to get on top of that. I know she had a conversation with um, our Bronx rep rep um, on the PEP. Um, about that, um, I also brought it to our attention that the extensions are actually getting passed um, historically now <laughs> with the, this current PEP, mm -hmm. even though they're making other decisions that make me want to cry, but they're actually passing extensions. So um, it's, it's, it's in her best interest, in my opinion, that for our district and our school's community that she she makes that decision. I'm putting it on her because the chancellor is giving the superintendents full autonomy. So they have more power. So there is no more going to the chancellor or their executive superintendents. They're given um, more autonomy to really make these independent decisions, you know, rather quickly. Mm -hmm. So there's really no reason for her to keep on going every which way. But, you know, so hopefully we'll get that. Hopefully we'll get an answer to you sooner rather than later. And right. please forgive me because I think we talked earlier in the last month. So yes. definitely this should have been happened already. I did put in a her radar. I did send emails and texts. Um, but I'm with you with the extension. Yeah. And my school is two buildings. So the main building can be the six to eight building and the annex can be um, a 75 building. So, you know, we can have everybody. There's in a there. lot of opportunities. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we're also getting a D75. Well, we actually have a D75 seat um, because um, we do have DOE programs like 75. 
that should be given preferential treatment. Oh, okay. So then we can put that in that building. Yeah. So that's part of um, the ask that we, um, we asked Senator Lou, uh, we went to Albany um, to, and we spoke to a couple of them. So they're supposed to be modifying, they're supposed to be revisiting the law, the charter law and modifying it. Um, um, so I think we were just waiting for this budget piece to be done. <laughs> But, you know, they have all that, you know, we've been advocating hard for, like I said, their utilization in space, the modification of the charter law. Um, so basically how things stand now, it's like, um, I think they put some, the, the approval of charters on hold, so to speak. But I think we really technically have until the end of um, this school year, not school year, end of December. Um, before they start popping up again. And of right. course, um, the governor, they made a decision that they're gonna open up 14 zombie 14. schools. Yep. Meaning schools that weren't successful and had to close for whatever secret mm -hmm. reasons they didn't want to disclose to the public. <laughs> but yet they yep. think to give them a go instead of building, you know, that's neither here nor there. I can keep them going back and forth. I, I agree. But I for agree. 108, um, we definitely are pushing for that extension so i don't want to say it's off the table okay it's actually okay. being heavily considered oh thank god that makes me very happy okay yeah i yes. love that because it, it, it's infrastructure that is literally just sitting there right yeah now and i know we discussed um ps89 they're very very overcrowded Yes, um, I spoke to um, school construction authority regarding that. Mm -hmm. So it also is another conversation that is kind of predictable with district planning of how it could flow. Because the way they're gonna see it is, is there a need? I mean, they look at it in terms of, is there a need for seats in the area? Because if 89 is overpopulated, but the schools that are neighbor to them are, are underutilized. They're all crowded. Or they're not over. I mean, we know what overcrowded is mm -hmm. when we go there and we see them all jammed up, right? Right. But the fact that the DOE needs to update their utilization markers, they don't incorporate space for um, CBOs, um, um, for, for enrichment stuff like arts, dance, music rooms. They don't incorporate the space for therapies, you know, for OT, PTs, <laughs> those therapies, um, gym space, forget it. They don't incorporate the rooms that we're transforming into gyms <laughs> because yeah. we don't have a gym. <laughs> so mm -hmm. all of those spaces are not being calculated and they're considering them potential classroom space that are not utilized because there's not a physical instructor assigned with 30 kids to the room right. to teach uh, a, an approved lesson. <laughs> so everything that we're trying to do to focus on the whole child in the community is kind of like, it's, you know, it, but they wrote that on uh, rubric before we added all of these things, before, right. you know, the push for, you know, making sure that we're really servicing our IP kids or helping out and adding all this stuff. So they need to be updated. <laughs> and that's, that's what they need to do. And so they have a lot teacher, of work to I do. Have, yeah, I follow standards just like every other teacher. Right. So again, it's a unique year for the council members. Because, you know, we've been fighting and advocating for this for two years. Um, this particular chancellor is not really caring too much to hear about us, but we've aggravated them enough because we've been partnering a lot with the local politicians, making trips to Albany, and really been joining coalitions. Like I've joined a number of coalitions just to push <laughs> yeah. um, and make a lot of noise. But they definitely are pushing back and probably taking advantage of the fact that we're 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 doing changes 
uh, <laughs> for new members to come in. And we have to keep an eye on who we're actually voting for, because some of these members are not really disclosing if they're working for government agencies mm -hmm. or, you we know, they have kids doing it in, right now. They, if they have kids in charter so they can learn about our schools and actually, you know, put in more proposals. Right. So yeah. please <laughs> educate Absolutely. your parents, your community, um, and really get them to really vote because it is really detrimental to all the work that we've been doing so far. Would you be willing to come to our full board meeting and, and talk on that? You'll have uh, two minutes to appeal to parents that are listening. Um, yes. Okay, perfect. I will. That sounds good. I won't be as wordy. I'm so sorry. I didn't know where to start or what to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. No, I'm just saying we have a two minute limit for speakers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, I get but, it. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, anybody have anything to add? We can so give her four minutes. Talk about if the we event? Decide on it. <laughs> Serena? Yes, I'm hi do you want to talk about the event yes yes can you hear me yep okay wonderful well good evening everyone let me start my video really quickly here um not that you need to see me but i just think it's <laughs> um okay so um that was a lot of information that was very helpful um mm -hmm. so i just wanted to um talk about the event that the community development and budgetary priorities committee along with the education and culture uh youth uh committee is what i and i probably inverted the the wording so please forgive me um is uh will be hosting it is the first um annual uh juneteenth event that cb 11 is uh 11 is going to host it is um going to be a cultural um event along with a father's day celebration where we will be honoring cb 11 um about um we we decided on three dads within the district and so more to come on that and how that's going to happen you're going to see a lot of um say you're going to see a save the date on social media um and um you're going, going to see how you can nominate your favorite dad as well on social media we really want the community involved um and so if you wanted to come and join us it's going to be at brady court um right here um i'll i'll get the full address all that information um i don't know the um i can look it up really quickly but i don't want to waste too much time on that um and we intend on having um so many different organizations from the bronx children's museum to um you know brags um you know talking about uh bronx rising against gun violence um, we're going to have a vision boarding, um, uh, time where not only the children, but the community, um, can express and share how they envision this community to be. We're going to have poetry. We're going to have music. We're going to have food. Um, it's really going to be a spectacular event. So I just wanted to share that. And, um, we've reached out to several elected officials. Uh, we've heard back from Senator Rivera, as well as, uh, council member Felice and, um, yeah, and so it's really in development. We just got it approved last Thursday by the full board. And what so is that? that is Sunday, June 18th, and that is a that's Father's Day. And it's gonna start at 2 30 and um it'll go from uh 2 30 to 6 p.m. Malcolm, did I miss anything? Sorry, no, you hit everything perfectly. And we're super excited um, to collaborate together. And so if you have any ideas, we um, please, you can forward them to Tiz um, and we'll, you know, I mean, it's just, it's meant to be, um, it's going to be a spectacular event for the children. We're going to have sidewalk talk. I mean, it's just going to be everything and anything. So if you think of anything, please share. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thanks, Serena. Anybody else have anything to add or any questions for Teresa? No? Actually, actually, I, I do actually. So, uh, Teresa, 
um, on our CB11, our CB11 website is is full of a lot of resourceful information. One of them being um, a community district survey. Um, that's something that I, I suggest that you may want to take a look at. It's under, if you go to our website, it's under our forms. Um, it is downloadable. You can also um, complete it. It's, um, you know, fillable on, um, you know, via uh, when you download it. Um, you can send that to me, but there is where I would suggest you put in any request um, that you have for any kind of capital and or programming um, requests. So capital and or, and or expenses. Um, you don't have to do it through me. You can, you know, do it through, uh, when I say me, I mean um, CB11, right? Um, you don't have to do it that way, um, but um, I, uh, because we will be having a public hearing in September, um, get, you know, getting um, public input, but you have the opportunity to submit your request throughout the entire year. I encourage everyone, and I've gotten so far a couple of requests, and that, that just puts us ahead of um, the curve um, when we are submitting um, this into, you know, into the city. And so I just wanted to say that because we recently just received received, um, you know, a really substantial it, to, to, to me and I think to the community board an award um, to renovate the East Chester um, Gardens, um, you know, NYCHA facility. And so we're trying to, you know, we're, we're we just got the letter like literally last week. So what I am saying is that the more we ask for, um, the, you know, we should, we should. So if you um, do that, um, I think that regarding the capital dollars. requests, um, the CEC, we can't put in for capital funding, mm -hmm. but we we do visit all of the schools. Like we can get it for our schools. You understand? Meaning yes, that I do. We keep the principals in line to the time when the window is open. We harass them to look out for the <laughs> the the, the um, applications. Or at least that's what I've done. <laughs> Harass them yes. for the applications or even sat down with them to really, I call it a wish list. Give me your wish list. You know, I don't, mm -hmm. whatever this building needs from what you think is a, a science lab or just a tech room, a paint job, new, I don't care what it is. Let them tell me it's not a capital request. Like they would like to tell us, oh, only list the top three. I was like, no. There's a reason why District 2 gets 20 projects <laughs> is because they're not going to give you just three. They list everything under the sun from every school. Um, this year, I, 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 I took it a, a notch further. I gave it to the borough president. I gave it to the councilman. I gave it to the assemblyman. I was like, mm -hmm. I, all of you guys have pockets. You all could figure out if this is going to be capital planning for SEA, capital right. planning for um, the borough president, the constituency funds, you know, because some of the councilmen get extra money uh, for the community and some of them don't. I don't know how they, they do it, but you guys decide how you're going to divide all that's in your pocket because this is what the schools need. And I, I, I feel like this year we had a better response. Um, but they do kind of like make us council members feel like, and I'm telling you this because I'm hoping you guys continue the relationship with the education council because there's no guarantee that in a couple of months I'm still going to be where I'm at. But, you know, educating the new members, you know, that, you know, they're going to give us pushback saying we can't apply for grants, we can't apply for capital funding but we can't get it for our schools or we can't teach our parents, teach our principals because we have a lot of new principals in the district who don't know that there was capital funds, you know? And you think that your administrators of the schools, like where did you come from that you don't know that there's capital funds that you have to fill out these applications. But um, I definitely wanna take a look at the survey just to follow up, but just to let you know, a CC people, we can't, say we want the funds for this uh i mean what well, they can't right. give us the funds right and so just maybe just for just useful information because as community members of the district you can make an ask 
So you mm -hmm. may not be able to make an act, um, you know, um, representing an organization, but as a person living in a community, you can absolutely make the ask. Good information, Serena. Thank you. Anybody else have anything to add? Efrain, do you have a question? She's fantastic for that, all I have to say. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, Chris, I just want to, and, and members of the committee and the public, I just want to reiterate uh, what I did at the general board meeting about the library. And, and, and I didn't want to say, I mean, there was so much going on, but it, I, I want to stress that because I remember as a, as a child going to uh, PS 106 and we went to the public library of Rochester took us upstairs and it was something, it was like one of the best experiences that we had as kids in school where we actually went, and we had a library in school too. What I want is to make sure that the community understands that in budgeting and everything, and there's so much going on, but to reach out to the uh, state leaders, not only in your district, but if you want to, you talk to uh, uh, email or reach out to the speaker, to the Senate majority leader, and let them know that the funding for public libraries is vastly needed. And, and I'm gonna just leave it at that. I think this has been a great uh, committee meeting uh, and there's so much to learn. And you don't learn everything unless you, you listen. Mm -hmm. It's just great to be here tonight. And I'm gonna go and enjoy my hockey game, but I'm glad I did this first. because This was more exciting than what I uh, was probably anticipating for later. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Ethan, I just want you to know they did not cut the library budget. It is still intact. They voted against cutting the budget. So for now, I mean, it's but not. They did lot. take 32 million out of it. Mayor's office say. No, I think that was a few they, they days. Took a, Sorry. Or the 4.2% that they were going to do they undid but okay. there's still 3.2 million that they that was outside of the budget that they are not giving them so that's that's a problem well then we need to then we need to we need to get that money uh and we may not get all, all of it we'll but that's some certainly it. something and, that uh, we absolutely need part to, do. to help get that done okay Right. Another Absolutely. thing is that you could push for the partnerships with the library, with the schools, because mm -hmm. again, as we're now getting mm -hmm. back to this new normal in person, um, the libraries are really trying hard to um, pull into the schools oh. or to get the students to get a library card, mm -hmm. to get the parents to get out and go to the libraries and, you know, you know, with the introduction of gadgets, you know, it's like, oh, read it on the tablet or read it on the, but like, we're really like pushing. There's, there's something about reading it on paper, like touching a book um, yeah. that, you know, you can't lose. And, you know, so just if we can strengthen the partnerships with the schools and the library, um, it, it should build the necessity more back for them and hopefully um, be a way for them to give money back to the libraries or get the my live the schools, you know, as the schools, you know, get it from the state. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I know the libraries in our area are amazing. They offer such great programs for the kids. They do. Malcolm, you've been very quiet tonight. You have nothing to add? No, it's been a long day. I work, so now nothing to add. <laughs> Listen, we just finished another two days of testing. So, this is, yeah, <laughs> testing is the bane of my existence. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so that's any old business we have to discuss? Oh, the uh, did we discuss the Yankee scholarships? Oh, Yankee scholarships, I'm sorry. Um, they were submitted to the Yankees. And the 
um, Jeremy wanted us to discuss the deadline for the for next year's. Um, you, you want to do that now? Yeah, we might as well do that now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, cool. When is that? I think that? we need to wait till at least after the holidays. So maybe a January 31st deadline. I think that's a good idea. And should then we, we can uh, vote on it in February. Yeah. Should we make and a flyer it. to distribute or something so people can start applying throughout the summer? And getting um, ready? I think it's too early. I don't think they will over the summer. Tim, I think my September feeling, would be. Can I, I'm sorry, Miguel. My feeling is that it it doesn't really get a whole lot of um of traction. So yeah. the earlier the better. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we always mm -hmm. we always end up extending the deadline, extending the deadline, you know, whatever. So it may be it may be incumbent on us to to uh, you know I'm not part of the committee, but uh, <laughs> you know it may be incumbent that we started earlier okay i know as a teacher who tries to send home notices if we send them home too early the parents put them aside and say i'll take care of it we have plenty of time and then it never gets taken care of so if we send it in september when we're back at school fresh start they'll do it by just the end of january they still have plenty of time it's not like we're cutting it close would it, would it would it make sense if we gave it to the CBOs in the community so they so they can start gathering people early? I guess so. It's like if 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 it's the CBOs doing it, then they'll be a little bit more diligent in in bringing in the applicants. Yeah, and then, we could do that absolutely. Teresa had a question about it. Go ahead, Teresa. I just, I just put it in the chat. Is it just for uh, community board eleven? Uh, yeah, you have to reside in community board 11, uh, but no, actually, or do your community service in community board 11. Um, the so reason either reside or community service. Or the reason work, why reside. I asked, right, because I don't know if each um, community board is tasked with, you know, they should all have it. For the y Yankees yeah. day, because I feel like I got something from community board 11 saying just for kids. I mean, 12, 10, just for 10 in um, community board 10. Um, but it's triggering something for me because we, we have a Yankees day, right? So if we're going to advertise, you know, like we should take advantage of how the schools the, you know, New York City schools mm -hmm. well, in the Bronx advertise their Yankees Day and even inform the families that there is Yankee scholarships in your so community. Is there a boards. way that we could yes. give it to you? Excuse me? Is there a way that we could give it to you so that it would yes. get more? Yes. Yes, because I is had where you're going? community board 10, I distributed it, but I had to put in the disclaimer only for kids that live in community board 10 and the borough president's office was doing the same thing. But my whole thing is if they're distributing it or, you know, it's based on each community board trying to target kids in their community, <laughs> then they should be some sort of collective. That's why I wanted the education committees, at least under district 11, mm -hmm. to talk to each other because, um, we could take advantage of this because like they're all getting ready to go to the Yankee Stadium on the 10th, which is next week, Wednesday. Oh, okay. for Yankee Day. So the whole Bronx, you know, certain school, every school is going to be representative, but there's certain school kids from each school that are going to have the opportunity to go. The district offices are going to be there. The We're going to be there. We're, we're allotted uh, the opportunity to go. And um, they really make a big day out of it. Um, at the Yankee Stadium, you know, the kids get a free meal. Um, there's this um, display, I think, where the Yankee Stadium actually gives them awards. Oh, I'm assuming nice. scholarships. <laughs> you so, you know? Know, Teresa, it might be. It, I'm sorry, Miss Roberts. It might be. Uh, it might be incumbent on you to, uh, you know, have a conversation with uh, Miss Visaggio about how that how we can you know make that happen so that there are a lot of um applicants 
So I'll definitely take advantage of the ask. Mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely um, the presidents in the whole Bronx. The somebody corrected me. The C D E C <laughs> presidents yeah. in the Bronx. We got a lot of we're a all lot of letters. We're going to be meeting on a monthly basis with, especially with the borough president's office, because again, um, we don't want we. We, we're having the same needs and we need the collective voice, you know, parent engagement, involvement, or information receiving is lacking, right? Because right. the resources are here, but why are we not getting the information? <laughs> so, right, and Serena put in the chat, all 12 community boards get the same Yankee Scholarship uh, Award. So it would be, you know, obviously CB7, would have it only for their residents, CB11 for their residents. Yeah, but the community service also has to be performed within the community board. Within the board, yes. Yeah, and there's only five um, scholarships given out. So even if 20 people apply, we can still only pick five, five winners. Well, that's but, for each board, right? Yes. Each board can give but out five the, scholarships. Yes. Because I, we have had a deficit of application it may be it, it may be incumbent on us to uh you know work with miss robert mm -hmm. to you know uh, up that yeah i agree so i to miguel's point um you know for example i received something uh not too long ago about summer rising that's you know mm -hmm. But the awesome. reason I received it is because I had gotten an email months ago about this program that, you know, is accepting applications later on. But if you wanted to get on the mailing list, you can, you know, put in your name and then you're on a mailing list. Is there any way that, is there something similar for the Yankee scholarship, either on a grand scale or on an individual community board scale where somebody, so like when we were saying okay maybe we should put the word out there earlier maybe by having a mailing list of sorts so that when the application period opens we can just refer to that mailing list and kind of send out notifica notifications that hey the application period is opening now please you know click on such and such link i believe now i have to double check with bernadette because she always you know she was the chair at the time I believe she does have contact with the counselors at the schools and she sends them the applications and then it's up to them to to nominate the kids because the, the kids have to be nominated from a community organization. So it's not just that anybody can fill one in. One of the community organizations has to sponsor them. But Ms. Tacho, yeah, we've had a deficit of I know, and it's because community organizations so, aren't submitting applications. So yeah. it, it may, just like Cynthia said, it may be, it may be wonderful for us to cast a wider net. Yes, but they still have to be nominated by a community organization. Sure. Do you mean a CBO, like community-based organization attached yes. to the school, or just any organization? No, no, no. That's Any really organization cool. in the district. It could be the precinct council. Uh, it could be the bids. It could be any the community NNA. organization. Okay. Um, one thing Everyone I can say, it may be at your, um, you all meet with the borough president's office? We have not. The community boards don't get together with the borough president's office? Mm, not our committee. I don't know if the executive board does, but I none of us that are here now do. Okay, so, something to just let you know. Um, I do know that there is an educational team oh, at, no, at the well president's office. Right now, they're made up about about with three members, but they did make known that there's seats available. And they're really pushing to strengthen that body in the mm -hmm. borough president's office um, to really strengthen, you know, to help support us to strengthen the voices of the parents and the, the sharing of information. Um, I believe that um, 
that there was a partnership with the Yankee Stadium with the formal ones, but um, um, borough presidents, but I'm not sure, you know, as Gibson is trying to kind of strengthen her team or give her team a new way to define stuff. I know they've been pulling a CC presidents in to, to see how they could be of assistance, but I think you should hold them accountable mm -hmm. to kind of centralize things that are being shared to each board. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when it has to do with education or scholarships. Um, like um, the, young, the young, young lady had shared, you know, it should be something central and then in the website or whatever it should specify, you know, pick the application for your particular board, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then what we could share is um, all the CBOs that are connected to our schools, because I've collected all the information already. So we have the school's community board, currently sitting on my community board is the president of the 47th Precinct Council. So um, I can get all the precinct councils, you know, at least in the Bronx or at least for your board. <laughs> You That's know, me. so they're they're, they're, they're aware. Of We've got a lot of people on forty nine. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm on forty nine. But that is a good idea. What's up? I, mm -hmm. Yeah, I have I have spoken to Jeremy over the course of the year, just in general about the scholarship, about the scholarship in general. Um, and he told me that I mean, there's really no cutoff period as to when we could like either start advertising for it or not. It's just that we just never know if they'll do it again next year, which right. traditionally right. traditionally they they just normally do anyway. I don't, know, I don't know how long we've been doing it for years. I mean, to centralize it, what we could do, we could create a Google form, I guess, which allows the, which could organize it by the, by the CBO and have the applications and, and, that, and that allow a more online form to be um, processed. Mm -hmm. I like that idea. Form. Yep. Yeah. Which allows probably after we cut off our cutoff period for this set for this, like, um, application session. We could open it up probably in April right now to, to, again for more roll on uh, sign on stuff like mm -hmm. that and cut it off. I just want to say that Efren had has a hands up. And up. Can you have another question, Efren? Yes. Um, so, um, with regard to the Yankees, um, and I, I want to. Committee to know my father when he was state senator is the reason why the stadium got built. And when Randy Levine and him us the agreement where they file three year periods, they can get funding. And uh, I'm going to, you know, as soon as my father uh, gets to meet with him um, to to discuss that about the scholarship and to see if they if there can be more uh coordination uh not only with the borough president's office but i would i would guess with, with with every community board because the borough president that she has an office but to me the engagement is if if the knowledge can be done and the yankees are going to do it uh and also remember the population in the bronx has increased so there's a lot of discussions that have to take place uh in the future and i'll keep the board informed uh if there's any information i would like the yankees to come to the executive board, uh, I mean, not the executive, but the education committee and to discuss it in the future, and maybe that can be arranged. But uh, I think that scholarship fund is fantastic. And actually, I think it could be increased, but it has to be through associations uh, and to see how that's going to be implemented. Well, it should be increased in my opinion. I mean, the Yankees have enough money to fund every child in New York City, but that, that's a whole nother story. But yeah, that's good to know, Efrain. Thank you. And I hope your father's feeling better. Does anyone else have anything to add? Thank you. You're welcome. Any new business to discuss? Chan Chan? Yes. Uh, so I think I mentioned it to a uh, few before that. Um, so on June meeting i would like to invite a uh, sender she is the um, sorry i got a co-founder and director of the next generation 
policy, uh, we vote, I'm sorry, this is so small. And then, uh, the New York City Youth Agenda. So she want to come and have a speak to us about workshop uh, among, uh, for the young people. So, um, sorry. Can you have her email me, Chan Chan? Yes, I can have her to email you. Sorry. Yeah. All my information is, just try to find all this information. Okay. Yeah, and tell us to include a phone number. I prefer talking to someone on the phone instead of just emailing back and forth. I like that little bit of personal touch. Yeah. Okay, no problem. I would ask her to call you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Serena, Serena has a hand up. Serena? Yes. Yes. Um, I'm not a committee member. You know, I'm a community board member, but I just had a thought and I don't know if, um, uh, you know, pride is in June, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's at all possible um, to maybe have like a youth pride event, um, you know, that'll speak to, uh, you know, um, Pride in general, educate the community. Um, I just want to say that, um, uh, and, and Miguel and I and Cindy, uh, now I'll just say this, we kind of talked about this uh, beforehand. Um, I had put in a request for a street permit on June 25th. Um, and um, that was because of the, you know, the Juneteenth event and all of that and the 30 days and whatever. But I still put it in just in case because I wanted to ensure that we were going to do it either way, whether it was going to be before or after. But there is a... Um, there's a permit that I that I put into SAPO. If it's something that interests the committee, we could and and I'm happy to join. Um, I'm sure Malcolm, you know, would be happy. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure Malcolm would be happy to join. Um, you know, kind of like in tandem. That would be like the following week. So we would have the Juneteenth event, and then we could have June 25th. Could be. Just putting it out there, but I think that there should be some sort of pride acknowledgement. And since we can't do everything in terms mm -hmm. of like, so I just wanted to say that. Okay. That's something that we can definitely discuss. Absolutely. Miguel? To piggyback off Serena, um, I think that it would, it would be remiss for us not to acknowledge pride. Um, several Bronx uh, community boards are doing far bigger things, putting, you know, pride flags in, in um, you know, veteran memorial. Um, I think that it would be good for us to put a pride flag in the office. We don't have to fly it outside but it may be uh, in the window. And I absolutely agree with Serena that since she has already paid for out of her own pocket, this, this permit that mm -hmm. we should, you know, do a little something. Maybe. Did you have a place in mind, Serena? Where, what street would it be? So I actually put in the permit for um, in front of 2016 Bronxdale. It's um, in front of that little medical pavilion. There is a pedestrian um, plaza. And so I put in the request to be in that little triangle. Um, oh we also have Destination Tomorrow that's um, right down the block from here um, that we could invite. Um, and we can invite. And then the High School of Visual Arts that's up the block, they probably have like an LGBTQ sort of student committee. And we can, you know, tap them and ask them to kind of run it. You know, maybe, maybe, you know, different high schools in, in the area that mm -hmm. it, we, we could just provide them the, the, space the space and the platform and they can make it whatever they want. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I feel like a lot of times we because speak at visibility. children. Yeah. Disability. Can I, can I, can I give a suggestion? to no suicide. Can I give a suggestion? Sure. So, I mean, I know that we know that Morris Park bid did do the Ramadan lights mm -hmm. um, for, for Eid. We could have a Rainbow Road. 
Ooh. if we worked with Morris Park Bid to try to get lights. I love that, that idea. I just didn't think that we, we could get the money for it. Now the thing they got is, the money for it. They got the I money. Quite, <laughs> yeah, I don't quite understand how the bid can do certain things and not other things. Like they're not yeah. allowed to do anything as far as the Columbus Parade is concerned. But yet yeah. they they're able to put lights up. So it depends on the grant. It depends okay. on the grant. They probably they probably have light grant. No, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Because that's fair. What, but what what kind of lights do you put up for Columbus? Like a, a anything, just even like participating. In the parade. No, no, I'm not. I'm just saying money wise, not putting up lights or anything. It had nothing to do with lights. Just when they were oh, asked. Oh, so to, they decided not to do it. No, they said they're not allowed to do it. Allowed by whom? By the city. There's certain things that they can use their money for, and certain things they can't. So I'm not too sure where that falls, what goes into bullshit. what category. Pardon my friend. Sometimes it, de it depends on the grant that they receive and what are the stipulations in the grant. Um, so for like something like Ramadan, I know that there was a lighting grant that was given out to some bids that apply mm -hmm. for it or some CBOs. So it, it definitely depends on the grant. I mean, yeah. it's, it's definitely the a conversation. Is, I, would, I, would I, would sit down. I would personally pay for the pride flag to be uh, to be flown all up and down Morris Park Avenue. Um, like the Rainbow Road could be lit. Uh, and I, I, I'm saying that right now <laughs> in 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 real life. Like I will pay for them. Will they fly them? I I don't know. I don't. I can't answer that. It it doesn't come from me. This is this is this is a very uh, yeah, well it's it, education culture um, right so I mean I I would imagine that we would have to ask I don't know who we would have to ask because I don't ask anybody in the community board for the the Columbus flags to be flown I put a permit in with the city and I do that with the Morris Park Association. We can ask oh. Miller. Miller, she's at the head of the uh, um, of the bid. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We can check with Camelia to see what she, you know, what idea she has. Like, what about the um the Albanian flags that get put up? You know, what is Mark Joe and I does those. I mean, that is that okay. is that's a huge thing too. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I don't think that I don't think I, I, we're not putting we're not putting up offensive flags. I didn't say we were, but it's just not something the community board has ever done. So I wouldn't even know. I guess we would have to bring it to the executive board or the leadership committee. It's, it's new territory for sure. sure. Yeah, it's new territory. Absolutely. Madam Chair. And certainly, Mike, you know, point of information. Robert. Point Go ahead, Rob. Since the polls are considered city property and they are on the streets or sidewalks, of the city. It comes under the Department of Transportation. And I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, former Councilman John I got a permit from the Department of Transportation to put up the flags on the poles. And who got the who got the permit to put up the 5G on the poles, huh? I came through the Department of Transportation also. Also, yeah. <laughs> and they're in charge of the I mean, underwire, you know, underlying cable wires. I'm so just giving you information. Well, you guys are now on the uh, Transportation Committee, aren't you? Some of you, Malcolm, you're on Transportation now? Oh, no, thank God. No? No. <laughs> no. Who's on transportation? None of you joined. Tra I thought somebody I joined transportation. I, I did. We did. Uh, uh, what's Cindy? Christine, Christine? I think, made a request to join it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I guess that would go under that committee. And me, me, Cindy, and Malcolm uh, were on sanitation, but did not request. So in the meantime, can we just put out some feelers, you know, here yeah. and, and then once we have more information, we can, you know, Camila, Camila might be, she might be receptive to it. So mm -hmm. I don't know. She might be somebody to reach out to and have a yeah, conversation. Absolutely. With. Absolutely. 
again, it, I will personally pay for the flags. <laughs> so the, I, the, I the rainbow no problem for that. Um, if 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 the bid wants to pay for rainbow lights, even better. Mm -hmm. So but, to that you know, point, I Miguel, mean, we're, we're all celebrating something at right. some point. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, if, and I absolutely, you know, it, you could possibly put in like some turquoise um, for uh, indigenous people from the uh, Columbus. No, Columbus is Columbus. Sorry. That's Italian Heritage Day. But, you know, Italian Heritage Day, fine. You guys have that, but let me have my rainbow. So, so we'll we'll put out some feelers with some folks, yeah, and then mm -hmm. we'll 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 figure it out. We'll try to figure. Yeah, it out. and it's not just me having the rainbow. There are, you know, we are your sisters, your cousins, your your brothers. Your, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, this is this is not this is not an issue about like, oh well, we're you know, we are a. a completely marginalized community. Listen, when my daughter's best friends came out to his family, they threw him out. I took him in. So yeah, I, I hear you. I hear Bless you. you. Uh, May I but just jump there's, in real quick? there's always the there's always the thing like, oh well I've got I've got a black friend, so I'm not racist. Uh, all right, so, uh, hold up, Serena well, had a comment. That's not what I meant, Miguel, at all. Oh, no, baby, no, no, no. I'm just saying, I absolutely, and that's why I said it was totally okay. Um, you know, on, but on another level, there are other people that do that kind of a thing. All right, Serena? Well, I just, I just want to say, I think that the lights, the rainbow lights, great idea. I don't think it's going to happen by June because... Of, unless, yeah, it, it, I don't yeah. think so, but it we just don't have tells us. Yet. It, but it just tells us, right, that we just need to do the work for next year, right? And we Absolutely. do need to ask um, Camilla how she did it, how you know how I all of this am is done. Going to buy the flag, and then we'll get all I flags. Want, I I don't I don't mind if you know if, if there are ten flags, whatever. I'm going to buy them. They should be flown on Morris Park Avenue. Yeah, I mean, even if even if even if you buy the flags, you still got to get permission from DOT to hang them up. And hold on, and there's also regulations as to how many banners can be flown on a single pole. I believe it's not more than three. So I, I do think I do like Serena's idea. Like we should definitely use this as a period so we could plan and make it big and make it something that we can reveal to the community as mm -hmm. you know this is what it is and here we are. I, I think that would be a grand I, I, idea, you know, know what I mean? So like buying the flags, like it's cool, you know, but taking the time to plan and to really make an event out of it. So people feel, so people see it and appreciate it. I think that's, that's very noble. And I think that's where Serena was going with it. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. did, did Serena make her point? <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. And so, yes, to everything, right? So it's, we're just we're just so full of ideas. So please forgive us. Um, I, I love all the ideas, <laughs> but just that that's a, that the 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 permit is there. If you want, we can explore it. We don't have to. I just felt that it it you know because I'm not going to use it, and that's okay. But we might be able to utilize it. And then I think that if we hand it over to all of the schools in the district, and it's, you you know better than most of us, right? Um, we could make it something small because the triangle is tiny, but it's the end of the school year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's all of that. It's celebration. It's culture. It's education. If you want to, that's it. You have my email, cb Serena Muniz at gmail.com. And that's Serena, that. so I just wanted to ask Wait, you. Miguel, like, hold with... on. Miguel, hold on. Ephraim oh. had his hand up first. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um. I just wanted to just say one thing, and, and then th this is the last thing. Um, since flags were coming up, on June 10th, 1948, 
it was illegal to carry the Puerto Rican yes. flag in Puerto Rico. And there were cops that actually arrested Puerto Ricans yes. in the Bronx Yes, because they waved the flag. So uh, I, there's not much to that, but I will mention this. That is the 75th anniversary. So banning flags probably isn't something that you're going to have me say, no, unless it's the most hateful flag where it's sure. promoting hate. Right. So, I agree. Uh, I, I think I'm going to reach out to members who were, uh, who were Puerto Rican that were in Stonewall. Some of them are still alive. And they will, I'll ask them their thoughts on that. But I think that putting up the flag for pride the is a good queen thing that so that it avoids. The Stonewall riot was Puerto Rican. No. Oh, and, and so, and so I don't want to, you know, right. And, and now when we're talking about flags and we're talking about heritage, we have to understand something. Uh, the month of June is a pretty unbelievable month in the history when it comes to flags, when it comes to acceptance, slavery. Listen, uh, I'm half Italian and I know what they did to the Italians in Louisiana. So having your pride and your heritage especially the Puerto Ricans, so many have passed through uh, Morris Park, would be incredible. Now, I may not be able to get something done for this year. I'll try, but definitely for next year. And I think that uh, we should be able to do that, and we'll get the money for that. And if I got to go and get the money from the mayor himself and tell him, hey, <laughs> we got to do that. So anyway, that's all. Thank you very much. Great. Bye -bye. Thanks, Efren. Thank you, Efren. You're welcome. Is it Ephraim or Ephraim? It's Ephraim. It is Ephraim. Ephraim. Okay. Yes. I got you now. Okay. Good to know. I like the way Cindy says it. <laughs> Ephraim. She, she says it better than me. <laughs> so we have a lot of things to work on. I think we have a lot of great ideas. And let's let's get started on putting some of these ideas into action. Amazing, wonderful. Question, question. So you know, what's like what what do, what do you want to do with that permit? You want to make it a pride thing? I'm offering it for a uh, youth pride event to your committee, to the youth education and culture committee, uh, because. I mean, I'll just have to go back in, re, you know, change the description of the event, um, and you know, we'll, we'll just have to start because we'll just we have, to have to start building we it. Have you know, to engage that destination tomorrow, and we can do that. The Bronx well, Center. Is, is really there anything? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was asking: Is there anything that we can think of quickly that we can do? That's quick and fast because so like we don't have to, uh, you know, worry about, I guess, like timing of it because we're a month away. Uh -huh. So we'll have to like work on and get approvals or whatever we need to do. So now. because I paid Look, for if it. Certain people can have a rally at a parking lot ad hoc. I'm pretty sure we can figure it out. The permit is paid for. So as long as the city gives us the the permission you know the permit right i'll just if you guys say yes i'll then go back and you know put in all the information whatever out the detail we'll have to give a map of what it's going to look like um you know all of that stuff which i've i've done um really basically the, the way i see it is if we go to the school up the block we give them the we tell them that we're doing this if they have you know a, a committee and they, the kids want to come out i can try on my end and all of us collectively can see about getting tables and chairs i don't see this as a big you know like too much of a i just see it as and we got the space we should capitalize on it we can promote it on social media we can invite people we can, but this is going to be our lift Right, the com but there is not a lot of money that there is, and there's no money that the community board has to give for this. To be quite frank, okay. I'll so I think the next valid. step is to bring it before the leadership committee. If I, I think we have to bring it before the leadership committee before it can go forward. I mean, we can agree here, our committee, right. but then it has to go there and it has to pass approval. I'm pretty sure. 
Can we, can we agree now? Uh, if it doesn't pass approval, then we can go ahead with what we're doing, but it cannot be connected to CB11. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it may likely not. I don't know. You might still have to go through CB11. Because like, um, like Grace with her library event, her black party thing, mm -hmm. she right. has to go through CB11 to get what she needs. Right. Because to get the approval. 120 yeah, days. But we would just do it as Amigos de Pelham Parkway. <laughs> That's a new one, Miguel. <laughs> How about, what if we... What it's if we not... Work... I, 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 hold I, on, I, hold I, on, Miguel. Hold on, let me my... <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, like, I, and I'm the I'm the new president. <laughs> Malcolm, and, you know, if they can all if they can all make their own little things up, then okay, it's Amigos de, de Pelham Parkway, and I'm the. Miguel, president. I love you, but I'm going to mute you if you don't let Malcolm speak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Malcolm. Yeah, because I I, I kind of want to use like the time we have left to to plan it out. So, like, what if we were to like have the free a free book giveaway at the place, right? Where we're giving away books that are centered around LGBTQ, yeah. I, um, you know, awareness. Um, what if we were to get like a face painter? Um, we could give out the flags, um, and maybe even I don't know. Maybe if we have anybody that could do a poetry thing, a drag queen story hour. Yeah. Oh. In my opinion, that would need parental <laughs> approval. <laughs> Well, did not, did not. Not, that has to be. That it has to be. Yeah. I'm yeah. against yeah. anything that a parent approves of. If the yeah. parent approves of it, 100. percent But you can't Absolutely. do it behind the parents' back. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So like, yeah. Nothing so the poetry. Making you do it. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. So, but, so so we could do. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. So we could do. The, we could bring like a poet in. Maybe they can make a community poem. Mm -hmm. You know, for that event, um, and invite the schools in. I think that. I, I kind of I kind of would like to have like something like really structured before we go to the schools to say you know we want them to come in because you know kids you go to right. kids without a plan they're gonna be like I want to go to that but mm -hmm. if we really if we really center the event around them and show them activities that are really catered to them they'll definitely come out. Yeah. But that's everybody, right. everybody likes free food. Everybody yeah. likes free entertainment. And you can't have food. You just with have the to city walk event. out of your house. Yeah, you can't have food. I don't. That would be right. too much. For, I don't think there's enough time. First of all, to plan something with food, we would well, need more. We, time. we can certainly. The thing, a, a let truck. me retract that. You can have food, but you would have had. I would have had had to make that. Oh, you know, um, different permit. Right. I would have, and I yeah. didn't because we weren't gonna give food, and then mm -hmm. we got to talk about handling whatever. Um, right. The the Juneteenth event is uh, different because it's in a venue. And it doesn't require the staple permit. Um, but nevertheless, this if you guys as a committee, um, and if I can go ahead and you know, I'll change it, I'll we and, and we can figure this out. I'm happy to help. Our committee is happy to join you in this pride event. No pressure, just an idea. Um, and if not this year, we can definitely do it for next year. But if we have it, we should take advantage. But I think that maybe a motion would have to happen during this meeting so that it could be presented, you know, moving forward. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. So yeah. Make a motion. Cynthia, you. <laughs> so uh, I would like to make a motion that uh, Community Board 11 host a um, pride event June 25th with Serena's permit. That's one. Anybody second? I second. second. All right, and then so so motion right so okay so that's good and then the other motion is to uh, look into possibly some lighting or flags for Pride Month, um, in the month of June. Second. Second. Absolutely. Second. So we'll bring forth that. Yay! It looks like for the bid, uh, the issue maybe it's uh because they may not have a business that associate with LG. Uh, that's hold on. Yeah, Tony, so, you're right. So that that will be a problem that they may not able to put it up. But I will continue talking and see what's going um, on. Excuse me. Um, I know a business owner 
Okay. I mean, I don't know if he wants it out there, but we do have one or two that okay. might, I got to talk to somebody. Let me, let me yeah. look into it. Okay. No problem. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. I just, I think that, um, Chun Chun, you have, you've made a very, very good point because it is, uh, Van Ness has become quite a conservative community. If I can, uh, if I can make that, um, but um, look, Ramadan is just as important as Christmas is just is important as Pride Month, and I think that you know, all things for all people. And Chun Chun, do you prefer to be called Chun or Chun Chun? Chun Chun is fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chun Chun. Better. Mm -hmm. All right. So are we, are we good? Yes. Yes. No. <laughs> so, so bring it before the leadership committee. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's where we're going. All right. Anything else we want to bring up? Any other new business? Motion to adjourn. Teresa, I want to thank you so much for joining us. I, I have, I have, I have an ask. <laughs> sure, Sorry. go ahead. Um, I definitely would love it if um, there's representation at our planning meeting for the special education fair at PS ninety six. Um, and what our day next, is that? Our next meeting is um, the the Wednesday after the tenth. So. I believe it's the, it should be the 17th. 17th. And is it in the evening or is it during the day? During the day. So it's like... Um, we work. I wish oh, it was in the evening. Uh, what time? What time? Maybe I could take a day off. I have a comp day, so I could, I could use it. It's not that long. It's from 10 to 10.30 or 10 to 11. Where? Zoom. On Zoom? I could, I, could, I could go. I could go. You could do and it? Then, okay. uh, eight. Yeah, just send me an email. Ms. So Roberts, can you send an email to Phyllis so that she can send it to all of us? Sure. And then the next planning meeting for the 121 school is going to be on Tuesday. Um, we're going to probably push for 10 the same time, 10 to 11 or 10.30. Um, so I'll just forward it over to you guys um, because I did ask for that Tuesday at least for, for less to see, I guess between nine thirty and twelve thirty. What what's the preference preferential time for everyone or most people to make it? And I would love it. You know, I love how you guys work together, and you know your whole dynamic. And I definitely we need guides. Um, we are parents. We actually you know. love each other. Yeah, I think we do. <laughs> 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 I think we're a good group. We work well together. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So, so yeah, if, if you could get that to Phyllis, that would be lovely. That way she can send it to everybody else. And um, I, uh, uh, I'm i generally available in like the 10 to 12. Okay. Um, yeah, earlier is usually not um, not better. Okay. And being a teacher, I'm never available unless it's lunchtime. 11 to 11.30, I'm available. I'm willing to give up my lunch. But... And I can do that. I can do that. No problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank um, you so much for joining us know. tonight, Teresa. It Thank was you. great to see you in person. Well, not in person, but to actually see you. And we'll talk soon. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, I think we had a really good meeting. Yes. Um, it is now, what time is it? 8.46, and I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Thank you, guys. <laughs> we'll talk soon. Great meeting. Somebody call, somebody call Jeremy and let him know. I'll call him right now. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.